Oh, something freaky happened to me the other day. I was, uh, it was like, I don't know, maybe like 8 a.m. or something a week, week and a half ago. And we were waking up on the weekend, my girlfriend and I, and I had woken up first. And I like got up, like got a drink of water and laid back down and like tried to get that like extra, you know, 40 minutes of sleep when you're still tired in the morning. And she was still totally conked out. And she sat up in like that creepy way that people like, still dreaming do yeah and she goes so she goes taylor taylor you're covered in blood oh god you're covered in blood and then she laid back down and fell asleep and i was like what so, so i woke her up later and was like do you remember waking up and telling me i was covered in blood and so where's she like, staying now no, she's uh, uh, in the in the basement, manacled. <laughs> yeah, but she's like, Fuck. yeah. I, I just woke up and I looked over and I saw you, and you were just covered in blood, and blood was spurting out of your chest. And I was like, wow. And so you just went back to bed, like you saw that, and then you just <laughs> went back to bed. You didn't even try to like help me. She's like, I don't know. I was just, I was just trying to go back to bed, but. So now I know if I am ever bleeding to death in the middle of the night, she's not going to fucking wake up. Now, this was from high school where I went to one of this girl's, it was such like a high school way for it to happen. This one of this girl's friends came to me and was like, hey, so-and-so thinks you're cute and wants you to, to ask her out and take her on a date or something. And I was like, all right, well, I'm 16 now. Now it finally makes sense because I can actually drive somewhere and get someone. Because I was never about it before I could drive where it was like, hey, me and my mom will get you at eight where it's, it's just <laughs> uncomfortable. And so I went same, and did that. I showed up at this dude's, uh, this lady, this Oh! Oh, this dude's, dude's house. To tell me more. This, this <laughs> dude's, uh, no, I went to the to her house, and this dude opened the door who was way too young to be her dad. And it turns out that her stepdad, I guess, where it was one of those stepdad situations where his mom like really hunted down the <laughs> age ladder, and so her her stepdad was like thirty one at the time, and I was like sixteen, and he was a bodybuilder. And was trying to give off this vibe of like, you don't fuck with her, you know, don't be, don't be getting out of my way. And I was almost sitting there like, this is too cliche that this is a bodybuilder guy on a first <laughs> date with chick. And uh, basically we just sat around while he watched us for a while. Then we went to go get in the hot tub where he also watched us from inside oh, on the couch. Oh, God. And I just left. It was awful. I told her I was going to take her to Red Robin and then I just left. I was like, this is going to go anywhere. This fucking weirdo with giant bicycle veins or bicep veins are I, not a I had to go inside to pick up Jackie on our first date. And uh, her father was like that too. He owned a weightlifting club and you know, he had these big biceps. He was just a big, strong guy. And uh, like the first time I met him and shook his hand, he asked me if I was going to marry Jackie. But I came up with a one liner on the spot. I'm like, I'll do it if she comes with that Jeep. And. That was my opening line to meet her dad. Did It'd be she? funny if you messed it up and you're like, I'll do it if she comes in that Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? Uh, goodbye. <laughs> A whole different world could have unfolded at mm. that moment. Yeah. I was, uh, <laughs> no, I was going to say, it made, me, it made me laugh so hard. I was going to say, I'll, maybe I'll resell it on PKA, but I was on a, I was waiting in the Atlanta airport. I had, I had to go out of town for something and I was waiting in the Atlanta airport. My flight got delayed for so long. Like I didn't end up leaving until, you know, hours after my my departure. And so I'm sitting there eating dinner at uh, Bobby's Burger Joint, I think, or something like that in the Atlanta airport. It's got Bobby Flay's picture all over the place. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I order a Crunch Burger and it says, you know, burger with chips. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess they don't do fries here. Some places just do like, <laughs> chips with the burger. And then they bring it out and there is no lettuce, no tomato, no onion. And it's just a burger with American cheese and a bunch of chips on top. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. I guess they literally meant a burger with a bunch of chips on it, which it ended up being okay. But I had to wait for a while. Like, hey, can I get like all like the normal burger shit, like onions and, and lettuce and tomato to put on here? But I was sitting there and there was this dude uh, you know how airport conversations are. You're sitting there, everybody's bored as fuck. You're kind of catching up to the left of me on, at the bar area, and it's like the corner of a bar. So you're, you know, you're more in contact, like not having to lean and and talk down the way. And to the left of me is a woman, probably sixty something years old. She kept asking about where the smoking room was, so she could have been mid fifties. Like she clearly smoked a lot. And to the left of her was another gentleman. To the right of me was a guy who was like who had I, I don't know how long he'd been there but he had drank way too much and 
and we'd been chit chatting. He was asking me about hockey and stuff. And so I'm like, I don't give a fuck if this guy's drunk. Like he's not being that annoying or anything. He just wants to talk about hockey. That's fine. And so we're sitting there chit chatting. And this woman to the left of me has what in front of her is so fucking obviously an urn. Oh, so no. obvious. Like it's a ornate. It's like, I think it was like blue with like some silver like shapes and things. A very good looking urn kind of thing. And and this guy, this guy on my right, like, I have been ignoring it the whole time. Like I'm being pleasant with her, being nice and everything. You know, oh yeah, 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 yeah. oh neat. Oh, I I've never watched this show, like that kind of thing. But I'm purposely not addressing an urn in front of her because I don't want to have that conversation in an airport in a layover. And the guy to my right is like, that's a that's a really pretty vase. What are you keeping? Oh, it? oh what? How did she answer? Or no, no, no. What do you say? Uh, that's. Uh, he said, like, that's a really pretty vase. What do you use it for? What, what do you keep it? It would have been too perfect. I think it's like, what do you use it for? Or something like mm -hmm. that. And <laughs> then she is like right next to me and she goes, it has my 27 year old daughter in it. No. Oh, God, no. She died in a car oh, accident on Thanksgiving. That. Oh, that's and worse I was than like, I thought. I was oh, like, so much oh, worse. Oh, my God. Kyle, you were thinking parent, I'm right? Yes. Yeah. No. Elder. No. I was hoping it would be parent, but this woman. No, no, it has my my twenty seven year old daughter. She died in a car accident on Thanksgiving. No, I was like oh, I was like I was doing the thing. She like I just, just I just I just pretended to be religious when she talked about it later. I'm like, you know, God has a plan for all of us. She's like, yes, He does. Yes, He does. And you know? his and plan I was, for your daughter was to live in that little pot you got there. <laughs> <laughs> and, Jesus. And, and then like, like it was maybe like a minute later, and the guy like thinks he's quietly talking to me, and he leans over and he's like. Yeesh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 like, oh my god, dude. I'm like, another beer, another beer for me, please. You just get me getting get going, going. And it was so uncomfortable. He ended up leaving later, and the other guy did on the far end too. And it's just me and this woman. I still have like 25 minutes to burn, like sitting there looking at an empty beer glass and my like the chips, you know, fragments remaining on my plate. And she's like talking to me like it's been real tough. It's been real, real tough. And I'm like, oh. I, I can't imagine that. That's that's so horrible. Do you have any other kids? She's like, no, <laughs> no, this is not my anymore. only kid. Does you know, that make it any worse? Are you supposed to have more kids as backup plans? I think you probably should have a backup plan for exactly this reason for Thanksgiving. Oh, you really? Know, massacres, and just but... like, all right, <laughs> we're going to need you to be a doctor and a lawyer now, Johnny. <laughs> for Thanksgiving was... massacres. <laughs> yes. But that was. Far and away the most uncomfortable. I, I there it wasn't one of those bars that has like the mirror in front of it, but I bet my face turned like so red because oh, it yeah. was more embarrassed for the, the whole situation than I've ever been like even on this show. Where it's just like, <laughs> oh, would it have oh been? Oh my god, dude! Why would you point out? It's it's got a cap on it. It's not a vase. <laughs> it, it's they shaped but so are all urns it was like holy fuck dude that was that was so uncomfortable why would you bring that up but yeah he he stumbled to his flight a little later and i, I that's the last i'll ever see of any of them so holy shit yeah that later now <laughs> i was laughing about it today because it was so uncomfortable but at the time with that poor woman you know watery eyed sitting there not really oh, touching her crunch burger very much you know it's like oh this is and it's on Thanksgiving. <laughs> but like the whole goldfish swallowing thing, it reminds yeah. me of uh, my youngest brother. Uh, I can't believe I never, I don't think I've ever mentioned this on the show. We had like a like field day kind of, you know how every school has like gay ass field day shit where you go and do do whatever. This is like, like middle yeah. school. Yeah, like middle school or high, uh, high school. Okay. And, but every everyone in the, you know, in the high school is invited and everything. It doesn't matter if you're a freshman, senior, whatever. Right. And they would have those and like the families would come out because there would be like the school football game and such. And, you know, and everybody wanted to see it. And so there were little booths that you could go to and play games and buy. And there was one that sold goldfish. And <laughs> I told my youngest brother at one of those, I was maybe 18 at the time. He was probably nine or something. Or, and I was like, hey, you should eat one of those goldfish. And so he swallowed i bought him the goldfish and then he swallowed it whole he put it in his mouth and just sucked the whole goldfish down i got a huge kick out of it all my friends got a huge kick out of that later in the day where i'm talking to one of my friend's parents who had an even younger daughter maybe six years old and he was like ah, fucking susie bought a goldfish 
We don't even have anything. I don't want to go to Petco and, and buy a goldfish setup. That's ridiculous. Why did you, why did my wife let her buy this? And I was like, I've got a solution. <laughs> and so I called my youngest brother over. And I was like, hey, come over here. And I was like, hey, Susie, can you let him see your goldfish <laughs> bag for a minute? And, and I'd already told him what to do. How old are you? He took, I'm maybe 17. Okay. And, uh, and so he takes the goldfish bag. You know, tears it open. Water starts to pour out. They're horrified in. already. They're horrified. Little girl's probably trying to grab for it, but I was fixated on what he was doing. He reaches in, grabs the goldfish, and goes... And just swallowed it whole right in front of this little girl who had just bought a goldfish. And then she was crying back to her dad to be like, can I buy another goldfish? And he said no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I bet he was low key happy you solved his problem. What? And like, are you and telling the, me your brother ate an actual live goldfish? Twice. That was the second one that he'd eaten that day, and he <laughs> ate a third later because he'd realized that it got him attention. Because people were like, "Hey, hey!" Like my friends, I told them that story, and they were like, "Hey!" They came to my little brother, and were like, "Hey, here's another goldfish. Will you eat this?" And so he was like, "Yeah." <laughs> he just he ate a third Sorry, one. He what? ate three live. My youngest brother at a field day ate a bunch of live goldfish because I like, coaxed him into it. And swallowed them all whole. And oh my he, god! And he ended up being fine. So <laughs> and he ended up being fine <laughs> and full. That's well, I, uh, when I was <laughs> when I was <laughs> I was trying to think of, like stupid little things like hobbies and magic came to mind. Not Magic the Gathering, magic like, <laughs> like uh, doing oh, that kind of shit. I and like I that. remember in high school we, got, we were drunk at a friend's house or something. There's a lot of a lot of guys and gals there hanging out, and it was it got to be late at night, and everybody was like, uh, <laughs> I, I guess I was I was pretty pretty drunk and i walked in and it was some guy like doing like magic tricks with cards for a couple girls and I, i'd never done it before i don't know why but i just was like let me see all of those and i <laughs> grabbed them all and i like just moved them around a bit and i just went right to the, right to the guy's face sitting there he wasn't that drunk and i just bent the cards and forced at him i went i'm an illusionist and i just sprayed them all right into his face <laughs> All the, all the girls thought it was funny, and so it, pay, it panned out. But it was such a, a rude thing to do. Why did I? Do oh, that? so shitty, Taylor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This isn't quite the same thing, but it reminded me of a story my friend who was in uh, Afghanistan for a while told me, and like I was just asking him, like, so like every single thing there is different than here. Like you never like drive by and be like, wow, a Michael Jackson record. Who would have thunk it or something like, like, and he's like, yeah. Like one example is we were on a night patrol, night patrol in a pretty safe area and we were pulling up across the road and we heard this like ah, 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 noise and we were like, what the fuck? What the fuck? So we turned on all the lights and everything and or, you know, the high beams and everything and we could see this like man just crawling towards us on the road, just crawling towards us in a really weird way, making a ah, 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 noise. And we were like, what the fuck? And then, you know, after a few more yards, he started going slowly into the darkness out there. And we just let him go because didn't know what was going on. And so we just, he just left. The next morning, we're, we continue on a bit. And we see this house, this house in the middle of nowhere where these, uh, these uh, people live. And chained in the front yard, chained up in the front yard, is this man on all fours. Doing uh, like clearly like deformed, like his legs don't work. They had a translator talk to this family. Uh, he had he had a dog house out there that this man lived in, like outside of the regular house. They had their translator talk to this family, and that guy was mentally handicapped. Fell into like a ravine when he was young, broke both of his legs, and because they don't like take you to special camp to help fix you, they just kept this man chained outside their home. And he lived in a doghouse, and that night he escaped. And like my friend who was in Afghanistan was like laughing about this because you have to have a fucked up sense of humor if you're gonna see stuff like that. And I was just like, Jesus Christ! So like, what did you do? And they're like, Well, it's not our, it's not our son, so we left. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Not. Even, can you imagine seeing an adult handicapped person with broken legs chained in the front yard somewhere in like Baltimore? It's like, no. <laughs> like, well, no, Baltimore. Yes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that I got it. That's not as horrible as I, I didn't know where that story was heading, but 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 my mind was going on a lot of avenues of of, of horrific shit, and that, that's not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. They didn't kill him. It was just a story of something they saw where he he still like it's burned in his memory. Cause he's of like, course. I didn't even know that's a thing that you did to people. 
Like, that, <laughs> I, I, it never crossed my mind. Like, oh, well, and, but, but your story about uh, I had something for the other thing, too, where like someone's trying to like explain something to you that they think is funny. This yeah. is a throwback to the poop bandit. I've said before, that guy was a fucking maniac. The poop bandit. If you don't know the story, filthy, a guy, a guy in my high school would shit into rags and then like draw Joker esque messages on stalls before and after hours schools and it would say like, ha ha ha, you'll never catch me in feces <laughs> on the wall. And at one point I caught him kind of because he was coming out of a bathroom. I was about to go in. He goes, oh, Taylor, <laughs> maybe don't go in that bathroom. It seems a certain bandit has struck again. <laughs> and, and I was like, all right, well, now I fucking know Mike's the, the bathroom bandit. And uh, the, it was hilarious. Like we all, like as adults, had to like start getting like walked to the bathroom, and he still found a way to do it. I don't know <laughs> where he found the time, uh, but he 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 did that to me once. Where like he, we were both friendly. Like like I was always nice to him. We weren't good. We weren't like friends or anything. But we were always courteous. And uh, he was telling me once. He's like, so like the the woods behind my house. Like my neighbor, he has all these dogs, right? And like they, they bother the shit out of me. They're like always loud and like barking. So this this weekend, and he like starting laughing like Cartman. Like in this weekend, I took I took a bunch of baloney and, and I took a bunch of rat poison out of my uncle's shed, and I put a ton of poison all in the woods, and the dogs are gonna eat it. <laughs> and he was, he's like laughing. I'm like, ha ha, ha Mike, you 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 prankster. Like you like, and and I had to like of course walk away, not feeling that comfortable knowing that that Mike had murdered all those dogs. Yeah, watch your lunch around Mike because he's got yeah. a pocket full of rat poison <laughs> and a rag full of shit. That guy <laughs> was... I'll have to mull... I'll have to dwell Ooh. on that guy a little longer and think if there are more stories. Because Dude, do you have your yearbook? Because it'd be funny to, exp to like, dox the shit bandit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not fucking with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a story. I am not fucking with the shit bandit. No. <laughs> Dude, so I'll told... wake up and I'll open my eyes late at night and then we'll see. I know what you did on the, on the ceiling of the apartment. I was at a hockey game like four years ago, a blues game in St. Louis. And the, it was after like the first or second period, it was bathroom was packed. Like there was, I would have had to wait until the next period started to get in there and take a piss. And so being me i was just like I, I can finagle my way through this line a little quicker and so i just like before walking in i set the stage walking around being like ted teddy teddy like and i walked up to the guy in the back of the line and i was like have you seen a little boy i think i saw him run in here and then i he, he was like no no i haven't here you can go on in go on in check for him and i walked past everybody in line calling out for this fictitious little boy teddy <laughs> teddy and then eventually got in just snuck past someone stepped into his stall <laughs> took a piss and got out walked past one of the dudes and he's like you're a real piece of shit <laughs> 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 and i was like hey, yeah <laughs> i went to this sports camp when i was like i guess 14 and it was like it was a religious camp but they like it was a sports camp, but they like tied in God to it somehow, where it was like, hey, you know, go do your sports and like, cause I was on the hockey section, we go play hockey. There's a football section, basketball. Everybody broke and did their shit, and then they came back and like gave us some half-assed Bible study of like, you know, you gotta work as a team, just like Christ in Matthew six ten. It's like, oh Jesus Christ! But there was this uh, <laughs> this kid, but they for some reason they let a kid with Down syndrome into the camp. Um, he wasn't, like, uh, running around doing anything bad, but every day at lunch, him and his handler, uh, who, like, helped him out go to all the different sports and whatnot that he could participate in, uh, would sit down with him and be like, now you have to eat all of your food before we can go. You have to eat all of your food. And the kid would always be throwing a fit and not wanting to eat it. And one of the days uh, that the handler was like, all right, you're not getting up and you're not going to play basketball until all of this food is done. And it was, like, a chicken patty fried and some green beans. And he came back later, and the kid had eaten all of it and was, like, holding his stomach, like, ugh, ugh, <laughs> making noises. And you look at the chicken patty. The outside is completely crisp like a chicken breast that's fried should be. The inside is 100% pink rare chicken that she made this kid sit there and eat over the course of, like, half an hour. He just wanted to go play sports. He was like, no, Alex, Alex. You're going to eat your chicken or you can't play basketball. So she made this kid with Down syndrome eat a bunch of raw chicken and he couldn't end up doing anything because I think he got salmonella. Yeah. <laughs> I used to like totally fuck off in gym, like didn't care. Like I, I saved uh, in high school, like you had to take gym, obviously. Yeah. But yeah. and so many people were like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to take my gym's freshman year, like to make it easy. Like I saved so many study halls, so many gyms, so many bullshit things for senior year so that it would just be whatever. Like, and it ended up, everybody who didn't do that was like, God, Taylor, you had this shit figured out. I'm like, I know, I hit puberty at nine. Like, <laughs> I, I, I put these pieces together. 
but what I <laughs> there's a I would forget my clothes all the time for gym, and so I would make uh, freshmen give me their clothes. And of course, I was much much bigger than them. And there was this one smaller <laughs> freshman, and I'd be like, Sam, forgot my shorts, give me yours. And he's like, Taylor, I don't have any other shorts. Sam, give me your shorts. You're such a like, bully. God. And then, <laughs> then then he'd give me his shorts, and. Uh, and I, I put these little tiny shorts on to like where Dick is almost hanging out what of my Sam shorts. Wear? And then and then <laughs> Sam would have to wear jeans that day. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and so I'd put on the little shorts and like you had to like run through the common area to get through the gym from that. And I would like take like big strides <laughs> in, in, in these little shorts with my ass almost hanging out. Like you almost see Dick and like you can you can nothing's being hidden in these shorts and I would just traipse in and start stretching like big <laughs> for, uh, for like kickball or something. And my, and the PE coach, like for, he hated this for some reason. <laughs> oh, he would be like, reason. he'd be like, Taylor, are those your shorts? I'm like, yeah. He's like, it says Sam on them. I'm like, ah, my, my friends call me, you know, <laughs> like, Taylor, go put your own shorts on. It's like, I forgot them, you know? And so, uh, Man, after like the fifth or sixth time I did that, he like he like he actually pulled me into his gym man office and was like, Taylor, you can't keep taking shorts from the freshmen. Just <laughs> bring your clothes. That's like, the just, first just and only time clothes. that conversation was had anywhere on this planet. It, it was, was like but I never fully took like seriously what he said for like punishments or like anything because it was gym and it's like I'm, i can play kickball it's fucking fine like i can deal with the 10 points taken off for it's freaking freshmen give me their clothes uh, but he was a meat gazer i think i brought that up before too right no so he, he would uh the way that our shower was set up is like it was like a just a big room with a bunch of shower heads there were no dividers it was just a big room with a bunch of shower heads and like fucking four of them worked well so you had to get in there quick and yeah, I think so that's you, pretty and, much and, every high school gym everywhere. Yeah. And everybody showered because it was morning PE and you don't want to smell like asshole all day. And like as you were getting out of the shower in the hallway, like where your towels were hanging up, instead of him being like around the corner, like yelling like, boys, you know, hurry up, five minutes, still class or whatever. He would be leaning up against the wall like this, watching us dry off. Taylor, to be fair, you only have that from when you were in class, and you just literally told us a story about how you used to steal the other kids' shorts. So he might have been watching to see what you were doing to them in the shower. <laughs> no, I think the only thing I ever did to them in the shower was make them... Uh, make, <laughs> there's a thing you did to them in the shower? I would forget leave to bring it, shampoo. It and so I would make them... There was a kid who had coconut milk shampoo, and, I, and he always... You know, I would always get that from him, and that was good. Another thing I did is I would take a, a chair, a plastic chair from out there, and oh, I would go, I would leave gym like five minutes early. This made me laugh so hard every time. But uh, and I was like the only the only senior in the class, and so you get that seniority. And so I'd like run down to the locker room, like get naked, grab a plastic one of those plastic blue chairs that like that you, they would sit you with like the three slits in the back. I would put it right in the middle of this shower room, aim every single shower at me. And then just sit there <laughs> in this chair. And then when like the freshman came in, I'd be like, tut, tut, I'm not done. And then I would sit there for like a few minutes until like eventually he would come around, you know, Mr. Meat Gazer, and see all these naked uh, you know, freshmen and sophomores and juniors or whatever standing in the corner, like, why well, is nobody showering? And like, Taylor's got all the <laughs> Taylor's got all the faucets. Oh man. Taylor, right, maybe, you're a bad funny. person, and I'll explain. <laughs> We taught my children, we raised this and we're like, look, there are going to be times when you're in a position of power and it's your job to protect people smaller than weaker than you, not to abuse them. No one ever told you that? I didn't take it to heart. No, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, it, it wasn't like a making people late, like after a minute or two, it's like you get up and of course it's a joke. It's not like, no, nobody gets to shower because I'm in here. Give me your coconut milk shampoo. He stole their clothes. Uh, if I was Sam in this shampoo. position, I would feel very abused. No, no this, the reason Damn that I liked it, Sam, William. the reason I picked Sam is because this kid, I knew him, like uh, he had a sibling that I was friends with. And uh -huh. so it was always known as like a joke of like, like he would never get in trouble for it. It was never like Sam showed up in jeans and it was like, oh, Sam, you're getting marked off. It was always like, God damn it, Taylor fucking 
Taylor's wearing teeny tiny shorts and you're wearing jeans. I know what happened. And so then Sam would be laughing about it too. Like it was, okay, okay. It was more funny than other stuff. But uh, All right. But yeah, I, poor I, Sam. I bet I bet Sam has has some problem with this to this day. Yeah. Like he sees a Ah, he, he hoards shorts now. Yeah. Yes. No, so, no one fucking touches honey, his shorts. Honey, I need to wash your shorts. No! <laughs> There's a lock and a key on that, and it's like a chest of fucking shorts. Yeah, over some there. sort of Levi based PTSD. Yeah. yeah. He hears like little like sounds while he's in the shower, and he's like, <gasps> <laughs> Oh, my coconut milk shampoo's still here. Okay, thank God. Maybe, right, maybe. Yeah. As an adult, now he has one of those car wash showers where he can put all the nozzles on himself <laughs> and sit there like the king that he always wanted to be. I had a funny little uh, pocket pussy story there. So in college, if you if you join a fraternity, I didn't, but I had a lot of friends who did. You have to carry around with you when you're pledging or rushing basically a little bag full of all these like necessities that at any point an active brother can be like, hey, lighter. And one of the pledges, if they don't have a lighter available or if they don't have a condom available or they don't have a cigarette available or whatever, they'll get in trouble and they'll have to do extra hazing or whatever. And so one of the things that one of my buddies had to do, it was two of them actually because they were both pledging the same fraternity freshman year. And they had to have cigarettes, condoms, a lighter, and they had to have uh, a pocket pussy (laughs) that could be demanded from them from any active brother at any time. And so there was one sex shop that I knew of in Columbia in, at Mizzou. And so a ton of guys had to go there and buy like these. And it was the only one was like, you know, bring back a pocket pussy. And so all of them were going and being like, all right, where's the cheapest one? Boom. Got it. And like grabbing it and bring it back. And went off without a hitch. Like this isn't like a one day thing. You just have to have these things available. And as a joke, <laughs> apparently I wasn't there. This is at the house. Uh, one of my buddies was asked, hey, give me your pocket pussy because they'll just try and catch you. Because make him be like, oh, I don't have it. And they're like, oh, 50 push-ups or whatever it is. And gave it to him. And the guy goes, this sucks. You're going to take this back, tell him it was too big, and you're going to get me a nicer one. (laughs) And so this other guy had to go back to the store and return it with his brother there, making sure he said it, like in the background, like doing some perusing. (laughs) And have to say, this was too big. I need a smaller, nicer one. (laughs) <laughs> had to pick one out and give it to that guy. It was just a, a funny little humiliation bonding thing. So how wonderful. So there you go. Yeah. And who said like it's better than like the eighties where like getting initiated was like getting paddled about or... you were the pocket pussy in the eighties. It's like, all yeah. right, bend over, it's time. <laughs> and even like on those big campuses, like I never it was hard to find someone who was like the stereotypical frat guy of like, you know, Beta house, ah! like just like that, like it just, I don't know, it just doesn't exist in that way. There were the only one person I talked to is a friend, is a friend of mine. When he was ple- he was a few years younger and pledging a frat, and he was like just about to be initiated and making a big scene about like, yeah, and I'm learning the secret handshake, and I'm gonna be connected with these guys in business for life, like with this fraternity thing, like we'd have so much secret stuff, like we can identify people anywhere, like but with like a handshake or something. And I'm like, that's really neat, man, but you realize that it's. 2012 or whatever 2013 or whatever and i can just find all of your little secret club handshakes online right he's like no you can't no you can't it's never been leaked you know uh zeta beta gata house i don't want to say what it actually was has never actually been leaked that way and so i like out of spite spent like an hour (laughs) really researching until the next time he came over i was like oh yeah dude about that uh secret handshake printed it out <laughs> you know, like, oh, I thought you were gonna do it. I uh, thought you were gonna like, let's go, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I like Kyle's so handshake. At the end, you just like, <laughs> like, oh, that wasn't it. I was wrong. Then you were right. I remember, uh, we were on the playground when we were younger, and this wasn't me or even in my grade. It was like the grade one or two above us, and we like nowadays they have like the mulch. Uh, flooring for all the the playground equipment and shit that's really soft, more yielding, or the rubber artificial stuff. We had wood chips, and not like little wood chips. Like these were giant shards of wood that were often very sharp. And all the boys, of course, would, like, they'd go through phases on the playground. We'd be like, oh, this week we're all astronauts. This week, you know, we're medieval warriors. And so it's this team versus this team. We're trying to take over the slide or whatever it is, which is really the, you know, east wing of the castle. And everybody's like mostly pretending, like kind of like 
you have to move your hands really close together to like hit them together like swords. And one kid, Jared, still remember Jared? He was such an ass. He left the school. He went up to this other kid, Travis, who was like different, like in the special learning area. And Jared, like like he had seen it in a prison movie, just went up with the wood chip and just went ah 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 like right into this kid's gut and like actually punctured him a couple times, like not bad, but bad enough that it should have happened at, during recess. <laughs> <laughs> so he just punctured this kid, and then Travis started freaking out and crying and running over to the teacher. Like they thought he was overreacting at first, but then you could like see little, little, tiny little blotches of blood through the shirt that he was wearing. He shanked him. Yeah, he 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 shanked this kid. Wow. So, like, my memory's making it seem like he hit him like nine or ten times. Taylor, you freaking. did grow up right outside Ferguson, right? Oh yeah, you know uh, Ferguson High. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that. Yeah, that, that's something you should get in trouble for. You shouldn't stab yeah. children. I'm willing to take a stand on that. 